So what's going on with this coronavirus, COVID-19? What are the results? We could argue all day about statistics because there's statistics to support whatever happening, whatever outcome suits whatever agenda you want to push or believe or use to cope with however you are living to make you think that you're doing the right thing. One end of the spectrum is that, you know, in countries where it's the worst, it's less than 0.02% of the population actually dying from this, um, and that it's not really any worse than you know, common influenza strains, and that mortality rates haven't even increased from previous average years. That this is all just overhyped to create fear, and but yeah, it's really, it's really nothing. That's one end of the spectrum of statistical interpretation. The other, the other end is that it's actually far worse than the media is letting on, that millions more have actually died from this, and the media is trying to reduce fear by talking it down and uh, making it seem like it's nothing. The media is trying to make it seem like it's nothing by not talking about it too much, of course, and you know, not fear-mongering at all, and that millions more have died, and this is going to be you know, the end of civilization as we know it. Globalism is going to fall because the economy is going to crash. Uh, most of the world population are going to die, and this is either a good or a bad thing, depending on what sort of person you are, whether you think we should save all people or whether you think we should uh, lose a few. But you can find information that points to either of these ends, you know, you can also find information that says uh, America engineered this virus as a bioweapon against China. There's also, you know, you can find a story that China created this self to destroy part of their own population for whatever reason. Um, there's also information out there that says that COVID-19 is not a new virus strain at all, it's been around for years. Um, and it's just as common as influenza virus and all its various strains and um, that you can test positive for it because you know, if you've had it in the past years ago you'll have the appropriate antibodies in your system you know which are there to help you get over the thing which is why you're not dead today and uh, you, you can still test positive for it um, so then you've got people who are dying from all sorts of things, you might die in a car accident. And they go, oh, let's just test, test him, and you test positive for COVID-19, and then that gets attributed to your death, cause of death. Um, so there's so many different ways you can look at this, and I don't care, because what I look at is the world around me and the effects socially. What is really going on? What is actually happening, and how are we being affected by this? I don't know anybody who's died from this. I don't know anybody who's been tested positive for this. I don't know anybody who knows anybody who's died or tested positive for this. Okay? So I don't deny that someone's, some people have probably died from this. All right? I'm sure people have died from COVID-19, uh, but I don't know anybody and I doubt I will. Who knows, I could eat my own words, I could die within two weeks. Um, yeah, I'll we'll, we'll go into what I'm doing to, to fight this in, in another video, I think. I want to talk about what the results are so far and what I think is going to happen. Well, what's going to happen? What's already happening? Look outside. Are you, are you In your country, are you locked down? Are you subscribing to social isolation? Because this is what's really going on. Some people believe that this is the globalists losing their grips and they're trying to hold on by any means necessary and this is in no way a coordinated attack against us. Some people actually believe that the people who control you know, the government, the politicians, all the money, the media, the propaganda, uh, the educational systems, the medical systems, the pharmaceutical industries, these people are in no way coordinating attacks against us right now via this pandemic. They're actually losing control. They didn't see it coming and they, there's nothing they can do about it. Um, pretty outrageous. 
and you think that. Sure, there's a chance that they'll, they will lose their grip if they push too hard. And people might sort of realize that this is not right. They might resist and rebel. There's a chance of that. But what's happened in countries that were, you know, constantly protesting? You know, it couldn't be stopped legally to stop people from protesting in the streets because they're not breaking any laws. Now, now you're not allowed to do that, not because you know, it's been made illegal to go out and have your say on the streets, but because uh, it's under some pandemic public health liability. Now you're, you're endangering the health of others due to this, this virus. If you're outside congregating in groups of more than two people, Potentially committing something akin to a terrorist act. How convenient. Convenience and fear is what's driving this thing. Doesn't matter how real it is. Convenience and fear is what is imprisoning people even further. People in cities are being the most affected by this. Cities are already open gated prison systems where the inmates are also the guards. But now you're actually being locked in your own urban cell under the guise of it's for your own safety you're restricted to one hour yard time every day unless it's essential business okay, unless you're going out to get your rations and this is this works well because it's uh it, it's intertwined with common sense physical isolation and separation is the way you do go about preventing catching deadly and dangerous diseases and virus as well as having a functional and healthy immune system which is really the most important thing but when things are bad let's be real physical distancing is a safe and smart way to prevent catching these things physical distance is what keeps us safe it's when you are heavily congregated especially in city type situations this is where diseases and viruses come from these are the results of overpopulation and too tight a congregation and this is why this common sense is being taken advantage of and being capitalised on. Finally, it's being capitalised on by people who are going to be forcing uh, social situations more akin to communism. This is what's really the result of this. We're being forced into a communist state. What's going to happen is cash is going to be outlawed pretty soon. Right now it's being preferred that people don't use cash because, you know, of course cash is a good way to spread bacteria, viruses and diseases. So it's not illegal to use cash yet, but you just watch and wait and see. It will be soon. Now cash is only worth as much as people want to you know, validate it to be worth. But it's certainly worth more than digital currency because it's tangible. Just like a gold or a silver standard is more tangible than paper money or paper credit. So they're making a currency worth even less when cash is abolished, and it will be. And it's all under the guise of convenience and safety. They've been working up to this for years with smartphones, getting all your cash and all of your function digital, making it digital. People with smart houses, with smart fridges, with smart locks on their door smart cars, I don't know if they're a thing yet, but they pretty much might as well be, as far as navigation goes anyway. Tracking, you know, you can't go anywhere without being followed, digitised, you don't need to be microchipped because people carry around these convenient things in their pockets willingly, or in their hand, actually most of the time, walking around can't take your eyes off it, you can't pay people to put their phone down. I'd... I'd speculate that it's well into 90% of people who own smartphones can't take a shit without taking their phone with them. And they pay thousands and thousands of dollars every other year to get the newest, most updated version of one. Convenience. Under the guise of convenience. And if you think that after all this lockdown quarantine business is over, whether that be two weeks, two months, six months, I have no idea how long this could go either way right now. The government and the media can tell you one way or the other that people are cooperating or not. Anyone who's cooperating with the social isolation and social distancing laws aren't actually viewing what's going on. You can't verify whether people are complying or not because you are complying yourself. 
by complying you're not observing. I'm not suggesting you do go out and watch everyone and do, but if you are able to see, you'll see for yourself what's going on. So if the media chooses to tell you that people aren't complying enough, we need to tighten down on the lockdown and the social restrictions. Congregations of two or more people are outlawed in this country right now. And for some reason we have this meme. People were already social isolated, socially isolated. Social media has been doing this already. It's been creeping its way in. All that is needed, you know, if, if you want to have some sort of safety measures to stop the spread of a virus or a disease, is phys physical distancing some physical isolation. Isolate the weak and the sickly that you want, you know, if you want them to survive. And the people who are harboring these things, yeah, isolate them physically. Social distancing is something different. People were already socially distanced and socially isolated thanks to social media. You know, social media causes physical isolation. People sit in their homes on their smartphones socializing, quote unquote on social media and now for some reason these same people who are already socially isolated and socially distanced from everybody that I've noticed this trend that people are making lockdown parties like while you're locked down and quarantine do something productive get off social media so they're encouraging themselves in this self uh, regulated prison system now to be even more socially isolated by getting off their their, their last thread of social interaction, which is social media. Watch Netflix instead, guys, boys. You know, things like Pornhub have been offering free uh, premium subscriptions to help people get through this. This is the answer. Whack yourself off for months and months and months by yourself. You know, what the fuck? This is what people's answer are. You're going to watch Netflix and, and jack off. Yeah, right. Social isolation. This is what this is. Just think about the difference between saying physical isolation versus size, social isolation. The implications of just the word. What does that do to your subconscious? I need to socially isolate myself. It means you don't talk to anyone. What could, how could a coordinated attack possibly benefit from such conditions? You know, if everyone's too scared to go outside for fear of, you know, catching this virus or being reprimanded or being fined thousands of dollars or you know, being arrested people are too scared to go outside what would you have what would you do if you in living in suburbia and you can hear your next-door neighbors screaming for their life you'll have no idea what's going on because you're socially isolated there's no way you're going to go and help them you know three doors down are screaming for their life like it sounds like they're dying Okay, you can't tell what's going on. Then two doors down, they're screaming for their life. They're dying. And then your next door neighbor's screaming for their life and they're dying. What could possibly be happening? How could anyone possibly benefit from this situation? And you're next. You'll have to wait and see what it is that's potentially going to be harming you. Very interesting situation to be in. I wouldn't be surprised if the internet gets shut down pretty soon. They've already prepped everyone for that. We've given out uh, free subscriptions to get people on the internet more jacking off. And already, and apparently, there's been reports of reduced bandwidth and, me and internet connections slowing down due to this isolation. Whether or not it's true or not, I don't really believe that the internet is going to be slowed down by this in supposed increased usage. I don't really think it's an increased usage based on the way people are already on their phones all day, every day anyway, and businesses operating on the internet constantly anyway. It could well be. So what's going to be the result of that then? People are going to be yearning, begging for more, you know, a better and improved uh, internet connection. People are going to be begging for implementation of this new 5G internet service under the guise of a better bandwidth and the and what and which is just going to be getting people on the electronic smart grid and locked in to their electronic 
tech prison even more. That's what's really going on. That's what's definitely happening. Everything is being digitized. We're all being... It's, it's the surveillance state clamping down. And you're not going to get relief from this. You might get some slight relief or the illusion of a relief, but it's you're going to be more restricted than you were before, six months ago. This is what's definitely happening, regardless of what is happening biologically with this virus. That's all I have to say about that for the minute. Thanks for listening.